This show contains movie spoilers and swearing. Now you really sound like Dan Bone. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I am Dan Bone. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I will find you. I will hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host, RJ McCready. And for this episode, we've got a special Christmas episode because it's that festive time of year. Going to be going back to the year in 1990 to look at uh, John Hughes, Chris Columbus, um, action, comedy. It's a fun movie, it's a fun Christmas movie, and that is Home Alone. And joining me today for the show is my good friend and regular co host, Dan Bone from the podcast on Haunted Hill. Dan, how you doing, mate? Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's an old man coming down the chimney. <laughs> oh man, I'm doing really well. I'm really enjoying the festive this festive time of year. It's one of my favourites after Halloween. So it's all about eating mince pies, drinking gingerbread and tea, and doing all those silly things. So yeah, I'm really good, really, really well. Thank you. Yeah, I've got nice to agree. To I've, yes, yeah, I've got to agree with you, there, mate. It's like, um, isn't it? It's that sort of cosy, you know autumn christmas is coming isn't it you know it's like uh, i've been sitting in the front room with the lights off with some candles with some mauled wine and watching some old christmas movies getting into that festive spirit so it's uh, yeah it's great man it's brilliant yeah me too love love some christmas films if a christmas film doesn't make me a bit teary at the end is it really a christmas film it's got to make me a bit teary at the end even die hard well <laughs> dan I, you know when i listen to your show mate I've known you for a few years now, but I know you get a little bit teary over most things. <laughs> I'm with you, mate. It means that you're you're connected. So it means that whatever it is you're watching is working for you. So I get that, man. <laughs> but um, what have you been up to, mate? What you've been what have you been watching? Because now I'm not on social media. I have absolutely no idea what you've been doing, so it's like an old school way of saying, what have you been up to, mate? I ain't seen you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, i um, been up to the usual stuff with my show, the podcast on Haunted Hill. Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've got a Vincent Price special coming up. Oh, yeah. Which is exciting. Um, and our Christmas special as well, um, which is always a good one. Always enjoy that, kicking back, kicking back with Gavin. Yeah. Just chatting absolute nonsense. Um, but I've been getting in the Christmas spirit, yeah. like you said just then. I've been watching some Christmas films myself. I've watched some of the usual cheesy ones, which we all love. Uh, Home Alone, you know, being one of them. Um, Home Alone Two. I actually watched Home Alone Three, Four, and Five as well recently. Um, Hang on which... a second. They made a fifth one. Yes. I didn't even know they made a fifth yes. one. Oh, fourth. Okay, we get into that. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's not a lot to say. It's terrible, um, really. So. Three is actually all right, although it's nothing to do with the first two. Yeah. It's actually not a bad film, but it really goes downhill when they hit four and five. Wow, terrible stuff. Oh, I've I've only ever got to number two, mate. Um, kind of left it at that, so because I didn't see Mercury Culkin in number three. You know, I just sort of just sort of yeah. left it alone, really. But um, number one and two are kind of like my go-to ones for that. So, but. I think you're safe for that. Don't go past two. There's my advice. But like I say, I didn't even know they made a four or five, mate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I my think goodness, mate. It's probably best if we forget they did. <laughs> so, what else have you been watching? Anything else? Um... Well, I've been threatening to watch this for a while now. Uh, so, I eventually got around to watching a horror, Christmas horror film called Santa Jules. Santa Jules? Yes. Jeez. Indeed. I know that. This is a. <laughs> how can I describe this? This is a film about a 
kid who finds a magic pen and he draws cartoons of a killer shark in the Santa hat, right. which comes to life and starts eating members of his community. He lives in a, a water, like on the water, you know, in a town on the water. And this shark in a Santa hat is eating people one by one. Later on, they realize that it's attracted by the sounds of Christmas music. Um, that's what makes it come in and eat people. They try and spear it with a big striped candy cane pole and then it ends up having this pole attached to it which it then uses to stab people and then eat them and uh i mean wow i don't know what to say (laughs) so let me get this right this kid's drawn a shark with a crown it's kind of come alive and set christmas time yeah okay right okay well we've got our signature shark movie from dan bone so there you go guys a christmas festive (laughs) one (laughs) Holy shit in hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you never, never let me down, mate. There you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something to bring you into um, the festive spirit or whatever. Whatever helps you do that. So, oh, on the flip side, though, yeah? um, there is another film that I watched. Just one other one I'll mention, which is, again, set at Christmas. And it only came out this year. It stars Robert Forster. And it's called The, the Wolf of Snow Hollow. And it's kind of like a werewolf mis- murder mystery whodunit set in a small town like Twin Peaks at Christmas. Sounds good. Really, really, really good. I was going to say, that sounds good. That does sound good. Is that Robert Foster from Alligator and the Black Hole? Is that what uh, you're yes, about? that guy. Yeah. Who unfortunately, passed away recently. Um, I was going to say, I, I thought he was dead. And then you suddenly said yeah, he's in the movie. Yeah, this one of his last like, films. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I was sort of thought sadly he passed away, but okay. Yeah, no, he's good. He's, he's just a sort of solid action man, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? He's a bit of a tough guy, isn't he? I brought it for stuff. Um, so, yeah, big fan of him. Yeah, me too. Oh, that's all right me then, mate. Too. Well, good stuff, man. Like I say, good to you getting into the festive <laughs> spirit there of a couple of movies. <laughs> that's right, I did, I did listen to your uh, latest show, uh, which was... Was it found footage movies and stuff like that? Yeah, it was. So, yeah. We did, um, exists, Bigfoot movie. And we did, uh, what was the other one we did? Hell House, LLC. Yeah, that was it. Scary things. So, I had to listen to that. There's something I will bring up, but I'll just say quickly, I'm glad to heard you mention The Visit by M. Night Shannon on your show. Because um, that's probably oh, yeah. one of my favourite found footage movies. I, I just thought that was absolutely just brilliant. You know, my, my daughter. It's really creepy. Yeah, my daughter loves it. She 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 always goes on about that film. So it's something that me and her watch together. So <laughs> I won't spoil it. Just probably the uh, probably the scariest grandma in, in movies. Would you say? Oh my <laughs> god! Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to talk about it more, but I can't because it's one of those films, and you you can only talk about it once you've watched it together and know the twist at the end but yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a good spoil film. it uh, the other thing you mentioned on there uh, it's kind of non-festive but it's funny what's going on at the moment is that um, is that that monolith that's turning up at the moment in the world oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is going on with it you know it's turned up all over the place and the thing that did make me laugh is it actually turned up in my sort of hometown um, yeah. well where I used to live which is on the Isle of Wight you know, and I'm like, I was watching the news and I thought, oh my God, this has turned up on Compton Bay. That's where I used to sort of go, you know, when I was a kid, you know, down on the beach. There it is. It's just turned up. <laughs> well, it also turned up in Glastonbury, which is very near where I live as well. Um, right. The top of the Glastonbury tour. Um, and somebody had written on it, not Banksy, which is strange because I, one of my theories was perhaps it's a Banksy thing that he's doing. Right, Somebody yeah, yeah. written on it, not banks. So we, maybe we can rule that out. It's um, yeah, think, you can sort of see why it would be a piece of art, and I think that's you mentioned it on your show, didn't you? Because Alice, your missus, mentioned that it could be yeah, some she art. Thinks it's it, yeah, an art project. Yeah, um, but I was kind of siding with you guys. I'm pretty sure you mentioned aliens and all the mystique. And I think it's aliens. Yeah, and you know what. I've always got to go with that. I'm thinking, is this it? Is this like the arrival? Because everything else is happening in 2020. I'm thinking, 
yeah, I could. I think most of us would just open the curtains up and go, oh, aliens have arrived. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's 2020. <laughs> Oh dear. There's another one uh, in Australia um, this week. I don't know if you saw it in the desert in Australia, popped up. No, no. I didn't so see uh, it. they're all over the place. Um, for me, I thought about this more since my last show I did, but you mentioned we, we talked about it. And I, I started to think maybe it's aliens mapping the Earth yeah. by putting these monoliths at key points around the globe. That's my theory. <laughs> well, yeah, it's plausible. It's plausible, especially when you look at the... Um, I'm going into some ancient alien theories now, but it's like the monoliths around the world, anyway. Like the, the stone ones, like Stonehenge. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they're all set up in um, places where they all line up with each other. So, I won't get into that too much, but it's a theory. If anybody's interested in it, go check it out on Google. But, yeah, it's kind of plausible. Yeah, aliens, man. Aliens, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they practically own most of South America. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about aliens. Maybe Santa Shock, possibly, or Santa Jaws, or whatever. We could possibly, yeah, I get that because of the festive season. But today we're here to talk about Home Alone. So, Dan, should we set up the traps around the house to get the burglars? Oh, yeah, I'm going to put the macaroni cheese in the microwave. Yeah, get the uh, paint pots, hang them up above the stairs and all that sort of stuff. So we'll set, up, we'll set up the traps. We will play you guys a trailer and we'll have a look at Home Alone. So see you guys soon. Where are you going? We're going to miss the plane. When the McAllister family left on their Christmas vacation... Did we miss the plane? No, you just made it. Yeah. They forgot one small thing. Have yourself... I have a terrible feeling. Did you lock up? Yeah. Do we set the timers on the lights? Mm Mm-hmm. What else could we be forgetting? Our troubles will be ours. Kevin! Ah! Home alone. Police in the northern suburbs are on the lookout for a pair of burglars who are calling themselves the Wet Bandits. We know that you're in there. It's Santa Claus and his elf. Get off my property. This is my house. I have to defend it. Where's your mother? My mom's in the car. Where's your father? He's at work. What about your brothers and sisters? I'm an only child. Where do you live? Can't tell you that. Why not? Because you're a stranger. He's a kid. I mean, what can a kid do to us? Kids are stupid. I know I was. You still are, Marv. This is it. Ow! I don't care if I have to get out on your runway and hitchhike. I am going to get home to my son. Why'd you take your shoes off? I'm dressed like a chicken. Gus Polinski, Polka King of the Midwest. If you have to get to Chicago, we'll gladly drive you. Hey, guys. Yesterday, he was just a kid. But tonight, he's a home security system. You guys give up or you're thirsty for more? From John Hughes. You know, I got a feeling this is going to be your best Christmas ever. A family comedy without the family. Home alone. Are you here all alone? I'm eight years old. You think I'd be here alone? I don't think so. Directed by Chris Columbus, coming November 16th. And welcome back, guys. So the synopsis of this film is an eight-year-old troublemaker must protect his house from a pair of burglars when he is accidentally left home alone by his family during a Christmas vacation. It's a family comedy. It's got a PG rating. It was made in 1990 and it's got a 103-minute runtime. And it's also directed by Chris Columbus. And John Hughes, who's the man of the 80s, pretty much did everything in the 80s, so it's a really great sort of building block to this movie. But Dan, Home Alone, man. Um, When did you first see this film? I mean, I've got great memories of watching this. I went over to an auntie's house. Yeah. 
um, probably at the age of 10 or 11, maybe. Um, and my dad is one of seven. Mm. So there's a lot of cousins, a lot wow. of aunties and uncles, very similar to this family in this, actually. Oh, right. And one of my aunties worked in um, a video rental store, which turned into a Blockbusters, but it was actually called Ritz Video before oh, right. that. Okay. And, so, so. Uh, she got hold of a copy of this and said, yeah. oh, you know, I've got this. Cause she was allowed free rentals as she worked there. And she said, oh, I've got this film for the kids. Um, so all the adults went off and drank in the kitchen and we all sat in front of the, the TV watching this. And it was just a, br- a blast, really. You know, all of me and my cousins, there's probably about 10 of us just all la- laughing our heads off, yeah. you know, cringing when people stood on nails. And it was just, I'd never seen anything like it, to be honest. It was just brilliant. I like it age and it's stuck with me ever since you know it's just one of my favorite christmas films of all time absolutely phenomenal yeah um i so i remember around about that time so i was probably in my early teens when this came out and i've just been watching films like predator commando die hard in particular and i kind of saw it when i first watched this film i thought oh my god it's like a kid's version of die hard because you got you know, <laughs> it is yeah Kevin trying to protect his house, he's getting up to all sorts of tricks and he needs to try and sort of, you know, get the upper hand with these two burglars and all that. And I thought he's pretty much like John McClane. I feel like I've seen this film. And I was totally on board with it, you know, because I, I watched it around my mate's house who I'd seen all these other wonderful films like Nightmare on Elm Street, Robocop, Demons and films like that. And we, you know, watched this movie and we just thought, wow, this is just everything you want when you're like an early teenage kid because I was just a little bit older than Kevin but he's relatable and he was doing everything you want to do do you know what I mean you know protect your house fight some burglars and like you said I've never really seen anything like this before you know it's just it was just so much fun he's even got the one liners um, yeah you know and he it's almost like a Tom and Jerry or Warner Brothers cartoon come to life isn't it at times as well well that's right yeah because your your hero character is you know a 10 year old kid who could be fun who is kind of vulnerable in a way isn't he but he's stepping up the mark and then you've got the two burglars who are absolutely excellent in this film aren't they do you know what i mean joe pesci and was it daniel stern daniel stern yeah kind of steal the show in a way don't they do you know what I mean there's these two bungling oh they do wet they bandits you know and uh, it's like I say because funny when you do like a review for a podcast you look into it and I thought this film's actually got an incredible building block do you, do you know what I mean it's 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 got John Hughes who, who wrote it who did films like um, Planes, Trains and Automobiles, Sixteen Candles, pretty much every 80s film that you know. And then you've got um, John Williams doing the music. Oh, incredible score. Yeah. And then you've got Chris Columbus who directed this film. And I thought about this last night. You could sort of see tones of Harry Potter in a way, do you know what I mean, where you've got a kid who's yeah. on his own, he does, he's sort of missing his family and all that sort of stuff, he's having to take on some bad guys, so the more I look at this film, the more I can sort of see it connecting to other movies and you can sort of see how it's all brought together. And Chris Columbus did direct some of the Harry Potter movies, didn't he? Maybe the first one or two? He did the first two. And yeah. I was talking to Becky about this last night and I hadn't really noticed it before, but the music in this is very similar to Harry Potter and obviously you've got John Williams doing both scores so you can sort of hear the same sort of tones in that. Yeah, uh, I, I noticed that. I noticed there were some very familiar tones. There was even an Indiana Jones-ish, the bit where he slides along the ice when yeah. he's escaping after just accidentally sitting in the toothbrush. There was a few beats in the music that sounded almost a little bit indie to me as well. Well, yeah, so, um, um, so it's you funny, can really hear that. It's funny how you mention that because when he's sliding down, it just reminded me of Indy in the mine shaft, doesn't it? When he's sliding down towards the car, <laughs> isn't it? So it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, totally. And just with Chris Columbus, he's a very clever guy in Hollywood as well because he also wrote some of our classic movies that we all love such as The Goonies um, Gremlins Mm. um, 
He's also got involved with the Christmas Chronicles with uh, Kurt Russell on Netflix as well. So he wrote the latest instalment of that as well. Um, and he also did Adventures in Babysitting as well. So, you know, he got some really good talent in this movie. He writes, um, he writes very well for kids. Mm. Uh, but also he writes enough that adults will enjoy watching what the kids are saying and doing as well in that film. So he does a very good middle ground. He's very good at writing in that way. Yeah, He's that's right. In that way. And the other thing I like about this film is that it's got all the comedy, it's got the adventure, it moves at a really good pace. But then it's got moments of um, where it goes a bit deep, doesn't it? Where he's talking to the old guy yeah. in the church and you're kind of like, I don't know about you, Dan, but you probably, I almost got like a lump in my throat for <laughs> Starting to get a little tear here with this, you know. <laughs> I've gone from laughing well, my so arse off to having a tear. Say what you will about um, Macaulay Culkin, but that scene particularly demonstrates why he got, you know, this film was pretty much written for him because mm. he could deliver those lines and that conviction. Yeah. And he's such a sincere kid in that scene where he's sort of, he's giving advice to an old man at that point, And it's just really well done I love that scene yeah that's right. right yeah and it's and the other thing I like is that Kevin is the guy on the back seat isn't he in his family his family obviously oh, love yeah. him don't get me wrong but he's there's so many kids and so much going on in this house that he's kind of just been put aside but then when he's on his own it's like he's got his time to shine isn't he and like you said Dan with that scene it's he's, he's a lot of character isn't he which a lot of people haven't noticed in that family so um, yeah, some, there's some really good bits to this film. Like I say, next to all the comedy, which is just hilarious. Um, and the other thing I was going to mention here, mate, is it was made for $18 million. I always like to mention this. And it made like $500 million, $500 million in 1990, 30 oh years ago. I mean, do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, there's a reason it, it, it sits in most people's sort of top three or top five christmas films of all time you know mm. it it just captures that christmas spirit of comedy family there's a bit of peril in there you know things get there's a high stakes and then everything turns out well because it's christmas in the end and it just does everything that you want a christmas film to do really yeah i can't believe that 500 million wow yeah it just went boom it, it you know went through the roof and for that time and I think 1990 was quite a good year as well, wasn't it? Because you also had, um, I think you had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles come out that year, which we reviewed. Hell yeah. And I think, oh, I have to think here, was it, I don't know if it was 1990, around this time you had Ghost as well. I'm not sure if that was a 1990 film. Uh, I yeah, I think, that was, I think that was 90 actually. Um, seems to remember that being a big film. So you had some big movies come around this time. And also, in the video shop, you would have had films like Back to the Future 2, Young Guns 2. So there was quite a lot going on, you know, with the sort of genres and um, films are doing particularly well at this time. Yeah, and, and I didn't see this till video, like I mentioned. Um, so we wouldn't, I didn't see this in the cinema, but I can only imagine a lot of that money came from video rental as well. Um, because I can imagine once word of mouth went out about this film, everybody and their neighbour wanted to rent it or borrow it off of their friends, you know. I can only imagine. Yeah, which was common then, wasn't it, for VHS. Um, films did better on the rental market, didn't they? Sometimes better than they did at the cinema. So, um, Yeah. Yeah, it's all good, man. So there's the building block. We'll mention a few other bits as we go along. But Dan, do you want to sort of take us through this film with your with your storytelling mate <laughs> <laughs> i will do my best yeah um everybody knows this story i guess most people will have seen this um and for anyone who hasn't i'm envious of, of anybody getting to watch this for the first time um must have seen this about 50 times in my life it's ridiculous yeah. really but <laughs> um you and me both but yeah we start off with <laughs> We start off with that amazing, as you mentioned, that score from John Williams. Yeah. And actually, that is one thing I wanted to mention about this film. The, the soundtrack, not just John Williams' score, but the songs that they pick for various scenes throughout this. Just so Christmassy, aren't they? Yeah, I was just, just saying, so yeah, there is, is the soundtrack is a lot of Christmas songs in here, isn't there? I think there's uh, Mel and Kim's um, 
song, isn't it? You know, it's there's a lot in here. You've got um, Chuck Berry, Run Run Rudolph. That's it. Um, you, you know, just that famous scene, you know, rocking around the Christmas tree when he's got the mannequins. Just that was it. That was the uh, that was a lot a, of good Christmas music. That was the Mel and Kim. Um, I think it's Kim Wilde that redid that song. I think that was her version. Oh, yeah, that's why that right. they did. So, rocking around the Christmas tree. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, I've just ruined Jordan that song. Cardboard oh, yeah, see, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's the other thing I saw. Was, um, he had a... I think Buzz has got an incredible bedroom, isn't he? From... I want to say from the 80s, just on the cusp of the 90s, this film, isn't it? And I noticed a... Ice yeah. ice tea poster in the background as well. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Buzz's room is badass. He's got a spider, a gun. Um, he's got naughty magazines. Uh, he's got loads of posters. Yeah. Um, and a secret box full of money as well. Ba- basically, it's, it's everything you need for a home invasion, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Right in that room. <laughs> <laughs> a gun and a spider <laughs> and a cardboard cut out of Michael Jordan what else do you need <laughs> <laughs> well we start off uh, with absolute chaos really we're yeah. introduced to this beautiful big home mm-hmm. um, and it's just there's the kids and adults running all over the place and you know it's chaos like I said and what what transpires is these these families. There's about three families here. Well, they're all part of the same family, but three individual families within it. Yeah. They're all getting ready to go to Paris for Christmas because one of the brothers has moved there for his job, and he's flying them all out. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, very exciting. But poor old Macaulay Culkin, poor old Kevin. He uh, he feels pretty ignored, doesn't he? Yeah, he's no one's sort of talking to. He's walking around. He's got that uncle, isn't it? Just calls him a jerk, isn't he? Oh, Kevin, you jerk! Oh, Uncle Frank. <laughs> it's like, it's and horrible. He's, he's got one of his other was it brothers or or nephews or whatever, isn't it? Oh, Kevin, you're such a disease, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? He's getting it from everywhere, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? It's like, um, so he's like the outsider. And he's sort of walking around, sort of saying, <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And they're like, go pack your suitcase. He's like, I'm eight years old. Yeah. I don't know how to pack a suitcase. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. And um, this, this always he gets told he's going to have to sleep in that room with his cousin who wets the bed as well. Yeah. He's not happy about. <laughs> That's it. And what else do you need <laughs> when you're packing up for a Christmas vacation as well, Dan? Isn't it? You just need a police officer at the bottom of your stairs, don't you? Do you know what I mean? It's a bit odd. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Joe yeah, Pesci. Yeah. So Joe Pesci. Amazing. Oh man. I don't know. Uh, I, I'd be interested to know how they got him on board because he was quite a serious actor up until this point. Um, I know he needs Moonwalker with Michael Jackson, and that was kind of a comedy, I guess. But he's yeah. a nasty piece of work in this. He, I think he did. Did he do My Cousin Vinny, or was that in the? I think. Um, uh, yeah. I think that was around about eighty-eight, eighty-nine. I think. So I think he started to sort of lighten up then. Um, but okay, they did have they did have um, was it Danny DeVito in line for this as well, which I could have seen. Oh, I can that see character. that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. But um, Joe Pesci just does a great job, doesn't he? I mean, he's obviously remembering from Lethal Weapon, isn't it? Do you know, Leo gets so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, Leo gets. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I suppose he had comedy, some comedy vibes in some of his roles. I don't know. He just, he just like as a kid, I was a bit scared of him watching this. But and he's, and that, I guess that's what you want, really, because these villains are actually they're you know they're burglars and they're not afraid to hurt people to get you know to burglar burglar the house. Yeah. Uh, um. At the end, you know, when they cat grab him and they threaten him, um, it's quite scary. They're going to bite off his fingers and stuff. They yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, I mean, pretty nasty. We've mentioned this before on the show, Dan. I can't remember what episode it was now, but they kind of remind me of Disney cartoon character villains. So, like the two villains out of uh, Hundred One Dalmatians. Do you know what I mean? They're oh, yeah. kind of. Yeah, we did mention that, didn't we? You know, they're just nothing. They're trying to succeed with this plan, but. Nothing seems to go their way, and one's a little bit dumber than the other, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And 
that kind of thing, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they're like that classic double act where they're both pretty dumb. Mm. One of them thinks they're the leader and is a little bit cleverer than the other one, but really they're just so stupid, both of them, that they're outsmarted by an eight-year-old kid, you know. It's just... (laughs) classic <laughs> i mean you know you got you got to say with these villains isn't it you know one of them comes out and says you know we need a tag for what we're doing i don't know we just sort of run the pipes call ourselves the wet bandits isn't it? and then jay pessy oh. is sort of going that's a stupid idea man why did you do that you know what I mean? it's crazy it's so funny it's so good the wet bandits the wet bandits <laughs> and of course in part two they call themselves the sticky bandits yeah they wrap Sell a tape all over their hands and steal things that way. So their ideas haven't got any better by the second no. film. Oh, <laughs> so Joe Pesci, uh, he is pretending to be a cop. Yep. Um, he, you know, he's sort of asking, you know, where are you guys going? How long are you going to be away for? It's a very clever uh, way to basically scope out hmm. this this house. Obviously, this house full of you know lots of good things, video recorders, TVs, probably some jewellery and money. So, yeah, it's a great idea. Um, no one really seems to answer him in, initially, but eventually gets some answers from from uh, Mr. McAllister and his wife. And then the pizza guy turns up oh, as yeah. well yeah. with uh, 12 pizzas, huge stack of pizzas there. And Uncle Frank doesn't want to pay for those, does he? No, this is, uh, was it $102 or something like that? Oh, yeah, you might want to speak to my brother-in-law or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You just know that guy's going to be so, yeah, a tight ass. Yeah. Well, he's, he's just stealing the glasses on the plane, and you know he just doesn't care, does he, about mm. anything? He's not a very nice, Uncle Uncle Frank. Ugh. Oh yeah. Look what you did, you little jerk. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and now, does this lead up to that table scene now, where everybody's having something to eat? Yeah, that's right. Because um, the pizzas arrive, Kevin. <laughs> Goes to get his cheese, plain cheese pizza. Yeah. And he asks where it is. And his brother Buzz says to him, well, it's all been eaten. So if you want any, somebody's going to have to barf it all up for mm-hmm. you. And then he starts making six signs. And Kevin's so annoyed by this at this point that he just charges at his brother, which knocks over the table. The Pepsi goes all over the place. Yeah. Fuller's head gets squashed behind a chair. I love that bit. It's so funny. Pizza, <laughs> Pepsi. <laughs> It's oh, ridiculous. Isn't it, it is. It's just like you say, where the Pepsi goes everywhere, and then that little kid's face just gets squashed in it. You know, it's like it's it's cheap gags, but funny gags that just work right at the right time in this movie. <laughs> and this is the the big deal, really. This is the this starts a chain of events now mm. that mean that Kevin is going to be home alone. Because one of the things people don't often notice is one of the things that's chucked in the bin when they're tidying up is one of the airplane tickets. So if you look carefully, you can see it says American Airlines, um, which means they're a ticket down. I never um, noticed which, that. Which help. Oh, okay. Yeah, that helps them do the miscount in the morning um, as well. But they... Um, they chuck the rest of the tickets and the passports in the microwave to dry out. Kevin is sent off to bed early because he's been so naughty. Yeah. And he's made to sleep in the attic. Um, and he says, I don't want to sleep with, with my cousin Fuller because he wets the bed. And mm. she said, his mum says to him, well, in that case, you, have, you can sleep on your own. And this is where he's pretty, pretty mean to his mum at this point. He sort of says, I hate you and I hate my whole family. And I, I wish that you'd all just disappear and I was alone. And I never had to look at any of you again. Ooh, yeah, yeah it's, like that, it's like that sort of Christmas um, Scrooge Tower, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Where you've got to be careful what you wish for yeah. because it might just happen. And that's what happens, isn't it? You know, it's it's left on his own. Well, I've always seen this film as a little bit magical mm. in that respect because after he makes that wish or whatever you want to call it, there is a weird storm that sort of blows over the neighbourhood, knocks yeah. out the power lines knocks out the telephones hmm. and means that his parents wake up late because their alarm didn't go off ready for their flight. Again, this is another thing in the chain of events, which means Kevin's going to be home alone because they're rushing around. They haven't really got time to check everything properly. The kid from across the street comes over and starts chatting to them as they're loading up the, the airport cars. He's a great... He accidentally gets counted. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's a little... He's like Chunk, isn't he? From, he is. Uh, he... The Goonies. Has this man got good gas mileage is this an automatic you know it's just like <laughs> brilliant 
He's like, is it cold in Paris? Yeah. How long does it take to get there? What's the time difference? And they're just like, kid, can you just leave me alone? I'm, I'm just the guy driving the car. So <laughs> I don't know any, any of these answers. <laughs> yeah, you can see everybody. Then he starts going through their luggage. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's just... Oh, dude. Okay. But yeah, he gets miscounted um, as Kevin. So they assume all the children are, are on board and all the adults are on board. Mm. And off they go to the airports. Rushing, because, you know, they've only got 45 minutes to make their flight. Meanwhile, Kevin wakes up. He's in his little pyjamas, looking around the house, thinking, where is everyone? This is strange. Yeah. And he slowly comes to realise, I made my family disappear. Yeah. He's excited. <laughs> he's got that big smile on his face, and he uh, that's, that's it. Boom, and he's not. He don't care, does he? You know what I mean? It's just like no. he's he's was he going around the house, jumping on the bed, doing what he wants to do, isn't he? Um, I think you get another is it a Christmas song coming here as well. Um, just again another, as you said earlier, Dan. Yeah, the soundtrack. I, which one it is, I can't remember it's which one it is, but. Um, I've forgotten how good the soundtrack to this is, you know, how Christmas and festive it is just to sort of move the plot along the way. So, but yeah, so he's got his wish and this is kind of like where the venture content starts now, isn't it, for uh, Kevin? Well, this is that fantasy um, element um, that we all have as a kid, of, you know, being left alone, whether in your own house mm. or left alone in a shopping centre, you know, these kind of things that you, you kind of wish for and he gets it. Um, and for the first few days, he's quite happy with that. But then he starts to realise, you know, jumping ahead a little bit, but he starts to realise he will end up being a little bit lonely and a little bit scared because he's only a kid. But at this point, he really is quite excited. He's the man of the house. He goes and explores Buzz's room, that amazing room we talked about. Yeah. He's got the gun and the spider. And, um, he finds, he the... finds a picture of Buzz's girlfriend. <laughs> Which is actually a... Um... A boy dressed up as a girl, I found out on a little what? bit of trivia. Yeah, because the director said <laughs> it would be too unfair for me to pick a girl to sort of put that comment in, do you know what I mean, where you say, like, she's ugly. So he thought, well, what I'd do is I'll just dress a boy up as a as a girl, and then it's kind of like a safe gag, do you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, a little bit of trivia there. Um, yeah, because Kevin does uh, Buzz's Buzz, girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Yeah that's, it, yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I noticed, he obviously finds the the magazine that we all want to find, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? The sort of Paul Mag. I think it was something like... It did make me laugh, because I looked at it a bit close this time. It's like TV person... Um, no, TV host or something like that, is it? Or um, news... Pre- sure. No, new, news, news presenters. That was it, news presenters. <laughs> oh, okay. Kevin opens it up and his eyes pop out of his head because he's clearly never seen anything like that before. Yeah. He just sort of throws it away. He's more interested in the baseball cards and the money, isn't he, really, at yeah. that age? Yeah, and there's another magazine in there, Dan, which is um, a Toyota MR2, which is my car, the one I've got now, which huh. is a little bit of a classic. But um, I thought, oh, there's my car in Home Alone. Sort of. Yep, yeah, okay, so Amazing. I thought that little shout-out. So there you go. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never noticed it before, but only this time around. Well, if you had the run of your house like Kevin, you would only the next scene is really what you would do next, which is you get out an eight a rate an X rated film and you put it on the TV. You get a giant bowl of ice cream. Yep. And this is where he puts on the film called Angels with Dirty Faces, which yeah. is a black and white gangster film. It's great. And he thinks, yeah, I can I'm gonna watch this now. I'm gonna see what this is like. It's, it's got, but of every, course, <laughs> it's got every gangster cliche, isn't it? I'm gonna give you the count of three <laughs> knuckles or whatever it is, isn't it? It's great. Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, he calls him a, a yellow lily liver, lily liver something or other. I don't know. Keep the change of filthy animal and yeah. all that kind of stuff. He's um, Kevin thinks it's good until the guy is mown down in a loads of gunfire. Mm. And at this point, he does what every eight-year-old boy would do and just shouts, Mum! But yeah. of course, Mum isn't there. <laughs> um, and that's why I think this is a little, there's a little bit of magic in the air, because as he shouts that out, we cut to his mum, Catherine O'Hara, on the plane. She sort of wakes up like she's heard that. Yeah, that's right. 
Do you know what I mean? She's like, oh. She's got that and sort she thinks there's something, something going on. Sixth sense, isn't it? She feels like, she's, at that moment, she's gone, I feel like I've forgotten something, isn't it? And is this where you get the Kevin moment, isn't it? Where she just sort of shouts it out, like, onto the screen, isn't it? Yeah, because her husband, Peter, is like, well, we turned off the gas. Um, we've locked the doors. We locked the garage. Maybe we left the garage open, unlocked. Maybe it was that. And then she suddenly says, Kevin! <laughs> yeah. And that's... And that's when they realise, shit. Yeah. Maybe I Every forgot to turn like, the coffee machine off. Oh no, you know, I left my kid <laughs> behind. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, um, and we now get our proper introduction to uh, the Wet Bandits. That's it. Good old uh, Marv. So they're, it? Okay. they're basically taken out house by house that's empty. They're taking out each house one at a time. Yeah. So they're in the first house and Marv is just smashing things yeah. off the shelves. <laughs> he doesn't care, does he? Yeah, because they've got a good plan. As burglars, they've got a good plan because they've do it. they done their recce and they've worked it all out. But then, like you say, he's in there and he, with his crowbar just like smashing everything off in it into a bag. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, and they work out that... Um, so, that for him going around as a cop... What he's, he's done that with all the neighbourhood houses, and so he knows the timings of all the Christmas lights coming on and off mm. so with all the empty houses. So they've got a really good plan. You know, on the surface they appear quite clever, but as the film goes on, we find out that they're really very not very clever. No. Something we didn't mention actually earlier, RJ, was before the kids, you know, had their pizza and that they were looking out the window in Buzz's room, and we had got our first introduction to Old Man Marley, yep. um, who lives in the same street. And do you know what the uh, tie in there is with a famous Christmas novel, which I just mentioned, is uh, Scrooge. So, oh, oh Marley! Marley yes. is the guy who is Scrooge's. Um, oh, it's gone right out of my head now. He's uh, he's like, it's he's like a, his um, partner, a, isn't it? Or something? He's, he's his partner. That's right. So yeah, that's the tie in Old Man Marley. So there you go. Oh. Yeah, which never is, thought of that before. But it's also a really good time for this movie as well, isn't it? Because you've got... We, we all had... I think we had this when we... I don't know about you, Dan, but I had the same sort of thing. There was, there was actually a butcher that I was scared of when I was a kid. And my mum my yeah. was always saying, why are you always scared of that guy? And I was like, I don't know why, mum, but he just scares the shit out of me. And I was just like... We all had that sort of character when we was growing up, I think. It was someone who just scared us for no reason. Well, Buzz really enjoys telling Kevin and his younger cousins and brothers about him because he says... Um, you know what he butchered his entire family yeah um, and what he's got in that garbage can is the, the remaining parts of the family and he the salt that he uses to salt the streets has turned their body parts into mummies <laughs> Shit. Uh, and they're just like Whoa. and then he looks around at the window and they quickly shut the curtain so you know he's he's pretty scary but we find out a little bit more about him later on and, and you, you find out that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover should you RJ <laughs> no absolutely not no the poor bloke's been stabbed but you can sort of see why the way that's all been set up you can see from a 10 year old why you'd be going shit yeah maybe that's true I don't know I don't want to find out <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah Kevin Kevin hears the burglars outside his house so he turns on some lights mm. <laughs> and they sort of run off and they say oh shit we thought the family was away <laughs> Oh damn it! <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we'll have to come back another time. So he he goes off and hides under the bed, mm. but then he. This is why I mentioned old man Marley because Kevin suddenly becomes brave and says, "No, no, I'm the man of the house. I'm not afraid of anything." So he runs outside, and he says, "Right, whoever's out there, I'm not afraid of you." And that's when old man Marley comes back into the the scene, and Kevin screams and runs off up the stairs. Yeah, that's it. And again, back into the the bedroom and under the covers. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's trying his he's trying his hard, isn't he? God bless him, but uh, he gets there eventually with it with the bravery. Oh yeah, he um we get the aftershave scene it's the next morning. You know he's he's feeling like an adult. Have you done this, Dan? Nice shower. Did, did you do this when you were oh, a kid? Oh, yeah, I know yeah. I did. Yeah, God. Yeah, Jeez. with the dad's brute, definitely. Yeah. The alcohol content in aftershave back then was ridiculous, wasn't it? Yeah, I seem to remember my dad having uh, high karate and all that sort of stuff. So. <laughs> my dad had that one as well. Do you remember that? Do you remember the advert to that? The bloke 
slapped it on and all of a sudden he's like turning to Jackie Chan and he's like fighting everybody. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I think that advert was next to the R White's uh, lemonade. I'm a secret uh, lemonade uh, R-White's drinker. Lemonade. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's some great adverts back then. <laughs> what was the one with the skeleton um, for the Scotch video, blank video cassettes? Re record, not fade away. Oh, my Re-record, God. Re record, not geez. fade away. Bloody hell, Dan. Do you remember feel, the skeleton? Feel, yeah, that? I feel like someone's just <laughs> bloody walked over my grave. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> bloody hell, yeah, I remember that. God. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, that's like yeah, so, back. Jeez. <laughs> Well, there you go. Kevin does his aftershave scene and it's taken us back to our childhood instantly. Yeah, the old, uh... And that famous scene, everyone knows that scene, you know, when he slaps. And he actually does it twice in the film. Yeah, he does which, it later uh, on, doesn't he? Yeah, that's you know, right. I, I, yeah. yeah. He goes into Buzz's room yeah. and calamity here because he climbs up on the shelves and what happens? <laughs> <laughs> he gets to the top shelf, doesn't he? It just goes straight down the middle, doesn't it? it just boom. <laughs> oh, God. Everything goes everywhere, including the tarantula. Oh, yeah. Which is on the loose now. I must admit, it's almost yeah, like... My wife's favourite scene is with that one. Yeah, Becky said the same thing. She had to look away from the screen. She said, tell me when it's gone. And um, I must admit, it did make me laugh, that spider, because it's almost like it did a bit of acting, because it sort of crawls one way, and then it quickly turns back and crawls the other way. Do you know what I mean? It's just like... Almost like I had a bit of character. I think the spider, the spider is an underrated actor in this film. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> there is a bit of acting about him, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? The way he's sort of... It's almost like he's got a bit of personality as if he's sort of scared as well, you know. <laughs> you imagine bumping into some guy in a bar and he's like, yeah, oh yeah. My claim to fame, I was, I was a spider wrangler on Home Alone. Yeah, I bet there was oh, one. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. I was the guy that sort of, you know, made it go in one direction then the other and... When it was on the Daniel Stern's face, you know, I was the guy that made sure it didn't bite him. That was my, my main job I've had, really. Brilliant. I'm, I'm sure he's out. <laughs> I'm sure that spider wrangler is out there right now, having some mauled wine, getting into the festive spirit. It's retelling that story. Straight in his little spider. Oh, do you remember when you were in Home Alone? Brilliant. <laughs> Still <cracking those> <laughs> You know, these guys, they just like to be stroked. They like a little stroke on their little head. <laughs> <laughs> How have we gone on this spider tangent? Mate. <laughs> um <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of you could there's a lot of questions like that on bite sized cinema, mate. Where where the hell did we get there? You know. Just, just, <laughs> you never know. Well, thank God Kevin does smash those shelves up because he finds all that money which he can use to go shopping the next yeah. day, mate, because he realizes he doesn't have a toothbrush. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's gonna go and find one. Um <laughs> While that's happening, the Wet Bandits uh, are robbing us another house again, and they overhear a voice message from Peter McAllister, Kevin's dad, mm. saying, Hi there, it's your neighbour from 3 Up. We're still stuck in Paris, but we think our son is home alone. Can you, if you get this message, can you go check on him? And there's a glint in Joe Pesci's eyes. He's like, hang on a minute. Maybe the kid is there on his own. That would explain why we thought we heard someone in there the other night. Yeah. Ding! Mm-hmm. Like old moment. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, Kevin accidentally becomes a shoplifter now. Well, this is funny because he goes in, doesn't he? And he, and he comes out of an odd question, doesn't he? He says, you know, toothbrush. And he says... Is this a particular make, isn't it? Is this got like an oral... He says, is this approved by the American Dental Association? <laughs> and then the woman right. behind the counter right. asks the manager... I don't know. <laughs> is this approved? And he goes, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, what a weird question. <laughs> he's such a weird little kid. Yeah. But, you know, kids ask questions, so there you go. But while he's waiting for the answer... Old man Marley walks in, mm. and Kevin freaks out and runs out with a toothbrush. That's it. And you kind of get that scene now, don't you, where he glides across a um, ice. Well, it was a frozen lake, isn't it? Where everybody's ice skating. A lake, around. yeah, I guess. And this is kind of like one of many sort of shots with Kevin, isn't it? Where he's sort of like gliding or sliding or doing something like that isn't it so he's being chased by the policeman 
yeah, and he skates along. He goes under all the legs. Like we get that point of view shot of him, a bit yeah. Indiana Jones, like you mentioned yeah. earlier. Um, he manages to get away from the cop, and then he's very depressed as he walks home because he says he says to himself, "I can't believe I'm a criminal. You know, oh, I've yeah. stolen a toothbrush. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, they're going to send me to jail. Oh god. <laughs> and the other thing, Dan, just going and back. As he's, uh, Oh, just, on, just going back to that POV shot, I thought there was a little hint of Jaws um, when he was gliding across. It oh, just sounds, legs. yeah, because it just sounded like when they're in the boat, and it's like, do, 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 you know, when they've got the um, uh, barrels and all that. So just clear a little bit of John Williams Jaws in there. So just thought, yeah, well, John that. Williams is he's pretty much written my childhood soundtrack, really. Mm. <laughs> so. <laughs> He has, Could yeah. Be. yeah. So I suppose I was picking up on I that more now. So, yeah. I watched Return of the Jedi the other night as well, and I thought, God, he, this guy has got his fingerprints over every film that I'm, I, I love from my childhood. Really. You know? Oh my God, yeah, yeah. I, I won't get into the Mandalorian, but I'll speak to you about that after this review. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Almighty. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah. we'll talk about that. We'll that um, so home, Kevin yeah. is, is wandering home with his toothbrush, and as he does, he, he is almost run over by the wet bandits. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. The, the, the van Sorry. stops like three inches from his face, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> he, he makes no attempt to move out of the way, does he? just sort of goes, ah! <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And Daniel, Daniel Stern leans over and he says, you should watch where you're going, buddy. Mm. Santa doesn't visit the funeral home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. All right. Um, and he notices that um, Marv has got, uh, sorry, that Harry has got a gold tooth. Mm-hmm. And he remembers that cop from earlier had a yeah. gold tooth. And he thinks, that's weird. So he runs off and they kind of try and follow him, but he manages to get away. Um, they Later on that night, they go back to the house because they know well they suspect that there's no one there other than the child yeah but when they get there it looks like there's a party going on in there yeah that's it rocking around the Christmas tree oh it's just great I love this bit it's really just cool isn't it It just hits right at the right time it's one of those scenes that you would talk about in the playground at school oh the bit where he's got the train with Michael Jordan on it and all the dummies and the mannequins moving around you know it's it's just so cool isn't it it's so clever yeah and he's 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 tied up to all the ropes isn't he and he's sort of dancing around and I just thought it's so clever Um, he's the puppet master and the other things that he does in this film is plausible as well it's like you could do that you know what I mean it's not it's not out of the rims is it he says, uh, the, the burglars say, maybe we'll come back tomorrow. Maybe they'll have gone then. So they, they, they run away. And Kevin's sort of quite pleased with himself that he's managed to deter them with his set of puppets and models. Um, yeah. We cut back to Paris briefly. His par- and his family are stuck in Paris trying uh-huh. to figure out what to do. They're watching um, It's a Wonderful Life in French. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then... Is this where she, the, the mum is phoning up the police? Like, it's all like the inept yeah. police, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? As if, because I was watching this, I was almost throwing stuff at the TV, thinking, just send a, send a policeman around. You know, that's your, that's your first. But, you know, hey, I'm, I'll just pass you over to the family crisis, and it's some, some cliche cough, isn't it? You're just saying, as, as, you, as, you, as your son been involved, <laughs> you know. Has he been involved in any sort of acts of like danger or crime or anything like that? You think, hang on a second. <laughs> she says, I don't know. That's what I'm calling you about. Yeah. And he's just scoffing his donut, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> it's the way over the telephone, isn't it? His she donut. Says, send, send someone over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says, Do you want me to send a policeman over to your house <laughs> to check on your son? <clears throat> Says, well, yeah. So he yeah. says, "I'm going to put you back over to the police." Oh man! And that not getting anywhere. Not getting anywhere. And that right there, Dan, is John Hughes's writing, isn't it? Do you know, what I mean, that's his comedy. You've seen stuff like this all throughout, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and The Breakfast Club. You've seen that sort of stuff, which is plainly obvious as a viewer, but then it's sort of just going in a misdirection, yeah. isn't it? So clever. <laughs> 
and just frustrating the the, the the main character, you know, really, you know, like Steve Martin throughout the whole of Plane Trains and Automobiles, he's in a similar situation where he just can't seem to get anything to work for him. And she's trying to, you know, just check her son's all right, but it's all chaos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Though. I mean, you mentioned Plane Trains and Automobiles, and obviously a, a main character turns up very soon. I just, you know, you watch this oh, thing. Yeah. This is this is a cut of planes, trains right now, isn't it? Where she's doing everything she can to try and get back home. You know? So yeah, it's a clever little time. <laughs> well, Kevin, back in Chicago, Kevin decides to order himself his cheese pizza that he missed out on the other night. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so he he plays a trick on the um the pizza boy. Yeah. Doesn't he? Yeah. It's great. With the uh, oh. with the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got your pizza for you. Leave yeah. it on the doorstep and get the hell out of here. Keep the change, you dirty oh. smuck, in it. <laughs> <laughs> and this oh. is like a little practice run for later on him doing this to the burglars. So yeah. that works really well. It scares the pizza boy away, and he sort of mm. thinks that's quite funny. Um, meanwhile, Mum's making her way back. She gets. She manages to persuade an elderly couple to switch plane tickets with her so she can fly back early yeah. back from Paris to, to wherever it is she lands. So that's kind of happening there. Kevin starts getting a bit lonely now. He decides to go grocery shopping. He's always growing up Yeah. in these next few scenes. Um, he goes to the supermarket and he, he gets milk and detergent, some little toy soldiers for himself, which mm-hmm. he says, it's for the kids. <laughs> Man, that's what I'll be doing. Toy soldiers when I was at age. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, my dad used to really tell me off because I'd leave them lying around and they're quite sharp. If you stand oh, yeah. On them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely. Uh, yeah. I think that was uh, house insurance, wasn't it? Is there any danger of you stepping on a <laughs> toy soldier in a house? <laughs> Might just put your premium up a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Funny enough, Kevin got told off earlier, didn't he? Because he had micro machines lying all over oh, the place. Oh, micro machines! Told him off, told him yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a blast from the past as well. That he uses them later on as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, so he's in the supermarket, and the lady says to him, "Are you here on your own?" And he says, "Ma'am, I'm eight years old. Do you really think I'd be here on my own buying all this groceries? I don't think so. My mum's waiting in the car outside." And then he says, "Oh, I've got a coupon for this." So he's acting all grown up, and he pays for everything. Um, and then he gets because he's living that adult life he gets a real taste of adult life now as the bags split open on the way home from the shop yeah it's great <laughs> again it's been there it's yeah we have yeah I've been there with uh, paper bags or whatever um, but again it's like I say it's a cheap gag but it's effective one isn't it and they're kind of all throughout this film but they just work and just love them because you know everything's going right for him so mm. John Hughes has to throw in just something slightly to a curveball just to trip everything up and you know everything's going right nope the bags have split and the groceries have gone everywhere yeah. adult life is hard <laughs> <laughs> um, now on a very quick tangent if I may um, yep. something I really like about this film which I notice more and more as I become as I've become an adult is there are some spooky horror elements to this film as well um so you've got the the storm as i mentioned you get that close-up of that santa claus on the wreath outside yeah um you've got um the, the movie that kevin watches that scares them a little bit the angels with dirty faces but also we've got a boiler in the basement in a spooky mm, basement haven't we? we have indeed dan oh yeah and, and it's it sort of says hello kevin <laughs> yeah because it's, it's funny so because you could actually have a horror film like that can you where you have a kid who has a like demonic um, furnace or something in the cellar who's eating people mm-hmm. or something so yeah but it's it's funny how that's tied into this film isn't it I suppose it's just yeah it's, it's weird really um, I suppose it's I guess it's like the Scrooge supernatural element maybe that's that floating under the surface yeah I suppose Come it's um, I suppose they're going on like as a 10 year old it's like it, there's there's a monster under your bed or the guy the old guy is a murderer or there's a killer yeah. furnace I suppose they're tying on that but where, where else have we seen a furnace like that Dan in a film that was kicking around around this time <laughs> there's no ordinary I'm thinking furnace. about Tom Hanks <laughs> I'm thinking about Tom Hanks yeah I'm t- thinking about art <laughs> hey hey 
We got power. We got power. That's no ordinary furnace. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? Oh, oh man. Dear. The burps. Oh, the burps, man. The burps. The burps, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going in your basement. But I guess, like you <laughs> say, I guess uh, he's all his imagination at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. He is a kid. Yeah. It's an, you know. He's a bit spooked out by the basement. He's a bit spooked out by the furnace. Mm. He does tell the furnace to shut up, though. So it's like a sign of him becoming a bit more grown up. Um, and this is where he uses the firecrackers and the videotape to scare away the wet bandits because one of them sort of starts knocking on the door. So he's <laughs> he lights up firecrackers, puts them in a cauldron, like a, a casserole pot. Yeah. And times them with the, um, the video gunshots on the video. <laughs> and Marv runs off. Yeah. <laughs> falls over the garbage back bins, falls off, uh, gets in, and, and Harry says, what, what's going on? <laughs> and he says, there was a guy just got wasted in there. I just overheard two guys talking. One of them was called Snakes. Yeah. He says, Snakes? He says, yeah, Snakes. He sounded like a snake. Mm. <laughs> and he goes, he I, says, I think I heard of that name before from somewhere, isn't it? Snakes, I'm sure. <laughs> it's so good I love it they're like really convinced that there's a guy called Snakes and yeah, he's, yeah. he's been wasted <laughs> <laughs> well back at the airport just when you think this film couldn't get any better oh, we my. get mm. the one and only John Candy yes we do indeed yeah it's uh, oh, this guy I think um yeah, I think that's a lovely tie-in, and it makes me think that the John Hughes movies are kind of almost tied into the same universe. So you had, like, Uncle Buck and Planes, Trains and everything, and uh, it's basically um, Del Griffiths, isn't it? You know, it's... Yeah. It's basically well him, be. isn't it? You know, hi, I'm Del Griffiths, uh, shower curtain rings. I love the way he sort of goes, <laughs> he's convinced that she's possibly heard of him, isn't it, you know? And uh, he says, hi there, I'm Gus Belinsky. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, "Do I? should I know you? And he's like, I'm in the poker band over here. The poker, uh, polka, 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 twister, polka. You know, <laughs> his name's about 20 songs. <laughs> and she says, sorry, are these songs? And he says, yeah, we uh, we had a, we sold about 600 records back in the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what, Dan? You know, you know what I said earlier? I said uh, something about like, my sense of humour. This is where my sense of humour comes from because I'm kind of like that character do you know what I mean where I possibly have that conversation with someone I've never met and you just end up like that you know oh you've you heard of it yeah 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 no no oh okay that's fine and then you still try yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the scene and start acting out a scene to them and yeah that's it I know what you're talking about actually to be honest he's <laughs> thing is though with, with John Candy's character he's so deadpan but he's such a lovable bloke isn't he do you know what I mean it's just and that's oh, what works with him. John Candy. Yeah. If I could, you know, I know he's, he's passed away now, but if I could, I'd love a hug from John Candy. Yeah, I think we could all do with that. A John Candy 2020 hug. I, I think he would generally oh. make your day feel better, wouldn't he, John Candy? You know, could you imagine yeah. just having him around for Christmas or barbecue during the summer? Yeah, yeah, it just... Yeah, God bless him. Well, he's such a lovely soul that he does offer um, Kevin's mum a lift yeah. back to Chicago in the van. So that's how she's going to make the last leg of her journey. Now, there's also a bit of an urban legend about this scene. I don't know if you know about it. Oh. Um, What's that? The scene about? Where just before John Candy introduces himself, yeah. when um, Kevin's mum is sort of talking to the woman at the counter, mm. behind them mm. is a gentleman with a beard. Uh-huh. And the urban legend goes that yeah. that person is none other than Elvis Presley, who faked his own death and apparently ca- did, a, did a little cameo in Home Alone. Now, obviously, this is nonsense. Right. But that is a bit of an urban legend that the guy with the beard stood behind um, Catherine O'Hara when she's talking to the woman at the counter is none other than Elvis Presley. It does look a bit like him, like how he might look. In 1990, a bit bigger with a beard, but it's also silly, isn't it? Really, it's funny where these <laughs> it's funny where these things come from because I, the the other one or, or reminds me of that was uh, Three Men and a Baby, wasn't it? With a ghost. I'm just about to say that, yeah. Same yeah. brain. Um, I remember us all talking about that at school, you know, because that was the time where you didn't have the internet and 
You remember trying to pause a VHS? It'd be like, do, 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 yeah. do. you'd be shuddering, wouldn't you? So, yeah. oh, I, remember, um, I remember that film showing that clip to my sister, I paused it and said, mm. look, there's a ghost. Yeah. And she was really frightened. And I, yeah. and I was a bit frightened, actually, yeah. as well. And I said, everyone at school said this is a ghost. But then when you grow up, you realise it's just a cardboard cutout of Ted Danson. It's nothing like that at all. But, but it's still scary, isn't it? Even, even if you go onto Google and you have a look at that picture, it's still quite scary, isn't it? When you look at that, you think, shit. You know, it's just... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely spooky. Yeah. So I guess what we're saying is Elvis Presley is not in Home Alone. And he's okay. possibly hanging around with Bruce Lee. You know, that's what they all say. <laughs> it? You know, I think there was a bet on down at the bookies, wasn't there? For Elvis and Bruce Lee to turn up on a horse and cart at Christmas or something like that, wasn't it? And I don't know if it's still on, but I, I still like um, to believe there's an island somewhere that they've all retired to. And yeah. They all think the deaths and they retire there, and they're all hanging out together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kung Fu Elvis. <laughs> oh. He did. He was a black belt, wasn't he, Elvis? Was he really? Yeah, oh. I think he was a black belt in karate. I think. Well, talking about Elvis, because I did like um, Bruce Campbell. I always think Bruce Campbell is Elvis Presley, you know, because he's got that sort of... Oh, yeah. Give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> yeah, he's all got that sort of swagger, hasn't he? Um, but he was in Bubba Hotep, wasn't he, as Elvis? And I thought that was another funny movie. Yeah, oh, that's an awesome film. Bruce Campbell mm. as a retired Elvis Presley. That's it. But not in Home Alone. Definitely not in Home Alone. <laughs> but no there we go so a little Elvis cameo for the film there guys so there you go well Wet Bandits um, they catch Kevin now they see him cutting down a bit of a tree and he's setting up a little Christmas tree at home and they spy in through the window and Kevin spots them in the reflection of the bauble so he very cleverly shouts hey dad will you come and help me with this yeah. trying to like make them think that his dad's home but no one comes and uh, Joe Pesci looks over and he says, you know that kid from earlier? This is his house and he's home alone. And uh, Marv says, no, his parents must be there. And he's like, nope, he's definitely home alone. We'll come back later on tonight. Yeah. yeah. So it's on. That's it. It is on. Set up the traps. This is great, isn't it? It's like the final third act of the movie now, isn't it? So... We get a weird scene. Well, we get a couple of little scenes that are a bit, bit strange now. And they feel like they're from other films, but they do work. And the first one is where Kevin, he, he goes to visit Santa's Grotto to ask oh, him yeah. for the old present. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I want my family back for Christmas, please. Mm. Um, we meet that weird guy who's, you know, obviously fake Santa. He gives Kevin a couple of Tic Tacs and what? says, don't spoil your dinner. <laughs> I think that's great, isn't it? Where he's 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 puffing on a cigarette, isn't he? Oh, 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 and he's you know putting his beard on and that. And uh, yeah, it's, and he's a nice guy because he says, um, Look, "I'll do, I'll see what I can do," but you know. And also, I haven't got any candy, but here's some Tic Tacs. You know, <laughs> go and have yourself a merry Christmas, kid. <laughs> and he and like I say, he's really nice, and he he does turn out to be a nice bloke. You know, making a quick buck as Santa. I just love it when he gets into his car, doesn't he? And he starts it up, goes, boom, boom, boom. And he goes, oh, damn. Yeah. He's like, son of a... <laughs> Brilliant. Well, just Kevin, uh, Kevin then goes to church. Yeah. And again, you know, he knows that these burglars are coming back at nine o'clock in the dark because he overheard them say that. So he goes to church and sits in there and has a little moment. And this is where he spots old man Marley again yeah. this is about the fourth time you spotted him now and old man Marley comes over to him and he says uh, you live on my street and he says uh, yeah and he says you know you could say hello to me sometimes all the rumours that you've heard about me aren't true mm. and they break the ice and they have this really lovely conversation which I touched on earlier where he says you know I've I've got that's my granddaughter in the choir over there you know and I've got a son her dad but We've had a bit of a fight and we don't speak. And I really want to speak to him at Christmas, but I'm worried he doesn't want to speak to me. And Kevin says, well, why don't you ring him? Just give him a phone call. And if he speaks to you, brilliant. And if he doesn't, then you don't need to be afraid about what the outcome is anymore because you know he doesn't want to speak to you. It's like quite good advice from a kid, really. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, they, they have a nice chat. You know, he says, have you been a good kid? And he's like, I've been a pain in the ass to my family. I've said some things I shouldn't have said. 
and they really open up to each other. It's so lovely. It's such a lovely moment. Yeah, and I, th- I think with I Kevin, because he's honest, so he's giving that guy an honest answer to what yeah. he's trying to figure out. And I think that's ultimately where it's kind of, it works out, doesn't it? And as I said earlier, you know, Kevin is like the outsider in his family, but he's quite a creative character, isn't he? It was kind of overlooked. So this, this venture that he's going through is all, you know, making a sort of, man of him isn't it you know in, in some way yeah totally Cause, yeah. Uh, and that's the final conversation really that bridge yeah. is uh, ready for the third and final act really isn't it he's ready now yeah for war oh yeah that's, uh, that's great this is where it kind of goes into like sort of full die hard mode now isn't it with the movie totally totally uh... he sets up a bunch of traps around the house yeah. which we'll run through uh, <laughs> quickly of course because there's a lot of them but this is where we get you know forget everything else this is what we're here for we're here for that physical comedy you know a selection of people falling downstairs or standing on things or getting hit on the head and it's just non-stop hilarious yeah. this is where me and my cousins would have just been cracking up <laughs> for the last 25 minutes of the film it was just brilliant this last bit I absolutely love it yeah, because I think as as from the age when I first watched this, from when you first watched this film, this this is what you was geared. This is what you knew about from the traders, wasn't it? And for me, it was like, yeah. I want to see this because this is so much fun, isn't it? And some of the, some of the traps in this are just hilarious, isn't it? like a nail and tar. And... Oh God! <laughs> well, we. The first thing he does is yeah. he shoots, he buzzes his air, air rifle, he <laughs> shoots Joe Pesci in, in the bollocks, with yeah. it, right in the balls. Um, then he shoots Daniel Stern in the forehead with it. So already he's, you know, he shot them both. What he's also done, though, is he's poured water all over the steps to the basement mm. and to the front door. So now it's iced over. So we get some terribly painful looking moments of these guys slipping on concrete steps. Yeah. <laughs> cracking their backs on these steps <laughs> which you think would stop you in your track straight away wouldn't it you know getting a getting a pellet in your nuts and then falling over like that you think you'd be done wouldn't you but no they keep coming back for more yeah it will, it will, I mean uh, Harry um, Marv walks in the basement and he immediately gets hit on the head with an iron yeah um, when he pulls that cord and the iron slams into his head now that is enough to put anyone in the oh. hospital isn't it let's be honest that would really, really hurt, wouldn't it? I, f- I feel that every time when it comes down. Like, f- ah, imagine that. And it's a, and it's on his as well because he's got like a triangular burn mark yeah, on his forehead. Yeah, straight on as his well. forehead. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of um, burn marks. Meanwhile, Joe Pesci tries the front door, mm. but the Kevin's put. Um, I don't know what it is. He's put on the back of the door handle. What is that? It's like a soldering iron or something. Um. I think it's like an old, it's for like boiling up water. So it's kind of like oh, the, well, the the rod that you get at the bottom of a kettle, but it's portable. So you think he's chucked it over the handle. I think that's what it is. Um, but you're talking course, about... Uh, Joe Pesci grabs the handle. Ooh. Talking about Indiana Jones though, Dan, this kind of reminds me of old Tote in Raiders of the Lost Ark when he burns his hand on the um, talisman. Uh, oh, Yeah. You know, he's like, oh, so it kind of reminds me of that. Good point, mm. Indiana J. And so he, basically this kid is like, this is like a young um, Indiana Jones or a young uh, Bruce Willis, you know. It's, yeah. <laughs> this is him before he became, because I mean, there's even some bare feet in this, like there was in Die Hard oh, at one point. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So it is, yeah, Bruce Willis as a kid or John McClane as a kid at Christmas <laughs> yeah so that doorknob that door handle really burns Joe Pesci's hand and he's got the M for McAllister burnt into his hand you know, <laughs> just to like, rub salt in the wound you yeah. know yeah. Um, meanwhile Marv isn't having a good time in the basement because he's trying to go up the steps but there's tar all over the steps which has mm. taken off both his shoes both his socks mm. and then of course there's a great big 8 inch nail sticking out the uh, yeah. one of the <laughs> the floorboards which he doesn't see <laughs> Oh, and you just see it just enough to hurt and he falls back down the steps and he's like I'm done with the basement I'm going to go back up the other way and try and get in through the window oh. but of course 
there's um, Christmas ornaments all over the floor when he mm. climbs in the window, which he stands on with his bare feet, just like Bruce Willis. Oh, yeah. Shoot Smashes glass. glass all over his yeah, feet. Glass, yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, <laughs> so while he's getting his feet ripped up, poor old Joe Pesci, he walks in through the back of the, the kitchen door. Immediately, his head is caught on fire by a blowtorch. <laughs> Uh, then he walks into uh, a load of glue all yeah. over his face and some feathers. <laughs> well, this this bit I like because you've got all these other scenes, like you say, burnt head, now on the floor. And then you've got like, it, it, it's like a humiliating act, isn't it? Because it's glue. And it's just, like, I find it hilarious because it just opens the door up and then a load of feathers and you just think, he must be thinking, what the hell else is going to happen? <laughs> And I love that then because then he's covered in feathers, like you say, and they, he bumps into Marv now. So Marv mm. and, and Harry finally catch up with each other. And he says, why the hell did you take your shoes off? And he says, why the hell are you dressed like a chicken? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. And then, and then Kevin says, come and get me. And they turn yeah. around and they go to get him. And of course, there's micro machines all over the floor, yeah. which he stands on. They, they stand on them and they fall over. And then we get your classic paint cans to the face. Yeah. Which has been redone, hasn't it, recently in a film? Oh. Uh, um, wasn't it in the babysitter? Better was watch it? out. Better watch out, of course. The film we went to go and watch. Indeed, first, we saw it, it together yeah. in the summer, weirdly. Yeah, sweaty. <laughs> what a hot day, and I'm sweating there with you and Gav watching this Christmas movie. But it was a good film. Really it's weird, good film. isn't it? Yeah, really good. Funny enough, Ga- um, yeah, uh, I've, still got my, went... I've still got my little candy cane. Um, from that somewhere have downstairs. You, I wouldn't eat that. I wouldn't eat that. No, go keep hold of it. A couple of years old now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh. <laughs> but for anyone who hasn't seen Better Watch Out, that's a really good Christmas movie. A bit more um, adult than Home Alone. Uh, but they do have some Home Alone references in it, one of which is some people getting hit in the face with a paint can. It doesn't quite end the same way as it does in this film. No. That's all I'll say, friend. But very clever movie, really good. And it's the two kids from The Visit as well. So, yeah, it's good. It really is. Tie into that from it's earlier, right, actually. Yeah, so. Now, we get my wife's favourite scene and my sister's favourite scene, actually, which is where the tarantula ends up on Marv's face. <laughs> and he does one of the best screams I've ever heard in a film. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, good old spider. Oh, I wish, wish, wish we knew the name of the spider, actually. They never call it the tarantula. I'm sure it's, prob- don't know what probably, it's called. probably got a name. Probably got a name somewhere, I don't know. It must have. Kevin set up a zip line. So he's, so, he's so resourceful, this kid. Yeah, he's, he's got, got a zip line that goes out. across his treehouse. And... Uh, glides across easily but when they try and do it of course he cuts the rope yeah you just knew that was always going to happen didn't you it's kind of like the uh wildy coyote isn't it moment isn't it where they do their best but it just falls apart doesn't it it really is like a a roadrunner cartoon because when they slam into that wall Mm. on the rope you just think just waiting for little birds to go spinning around their head yeah yeah that's it stars or um, (laughs) or tom and jerry isn't it the same sort of thing on Pretty sure that's probably what they were yeah. going with, isn't it? So, <laughs> Thomas. Um, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Kevin. Kevin is chased. Uh, his plan is to lure them into the neighbor's house, but they outsmart him, and they go in for a different door, and they catch him in the kitchen of the neighbor's house, which has been flooded from earlier. Yeah, and they grab him, they hook him on a hook on the door, and they say they're gonna they're gonna smash him in the face with a paint can, and they're gonna. Um, smack his face with a an iron and then joe pesci says but first of all i'm going to bite off each one of these little mm. fingers and you think these guys are serious i think yeah. they're actually going to do all this stuff pretty bad yeah when it's you horrible. think about it yeah it's pretty bad but thankfully old man marley shows up yeah with his shovel <laughs> And his big welly and boots. Them both in the head. <laughs> yeah, he's got them big snow boots, hasn't he? Yeah, that's it. It's enough to scare anybody, those. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty, pretty weird boots. Was it? I, I know what your snow, um, police... snow boots did last Christmas. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it's gone full circle because um, old man Marley's rescued Kevin. Um, they're friends now. The police show up and uh, the wet bandits are arrested. And he says, make sure that when this gets in the papers, we're called the wet bandits. Mm. Uh, um, so they're really excited to, well, Marv is really excited to, uh, you know, he's be a famous bank robber, fine, yeah. but he's not. Uh-huh. And um, little Kevin, he's getting ready for bed now. It's been a busy night for him. So he hangs up all the stockings and he really hopes that his Christmas wish is going to come true. And in the morning he wakes up and it's snowing. Uh, it's a lovely snowy Christmas morning. Yeah. And he sort of says, Mum? There's no mum there. He's all on his own. But then all of a sudden, John Candy drops her off at the door. Yeah. And she goes running in. And this is where that lump in the throat comes back, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That Chris- Christmas feeling. And uh, just as they sort of hug and make up, he says, where's the rest of the family? And she's like, well, they're still in Paris. But And then just as she says that, they all come in through the door because they managed to get a flight the next day. They're reunited. Um, Buzz and Kevin seem like they're buddies. They sort of high five each other. Um, they said, "Oh, it's a shame we haven't got any food, really." And Kevin says, "Oh, I went shopping." And they're like, "Wow, that's brilliant! Well, what else did you get up to?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, you know, I just hung around the house a bit." Um, I love the bit where his dad finds uh, Joe Pesci's gold tooth on the floor <laughs> yeah, and we that, get knocked out earlier. That was always going to happen, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> what a funny thing to find and Kevin, oh. <laughs> Kevin, the cheesiest probably bit now is Kevin looks out the window and he sees old man Marley called his son and his son has come for Christmas dinner yeah. and they hug and um, just when you think it's all nice and lovely you just hear Buzz say Kevin what did you do to my room yeah. and that's it and that's that's the credits <laughs> yeah and it comes to the end so there you go that is uh, Home Alone what a, what a cracking movie though Dan isn't it do you know what I mean it's a it's a feel-good film, isn't it? It's um, it just does everything you want it to do, doesn't it? You know, in terms of the pace, the venture, the drama, the comedy, the action, even the like, say, the soundtrack. It's got all the Christmas tunes in it and stuff like that. It's snowing. Um, there's also a little bit of like, say, it's just a little bit of horror in there as well for a sort of kids, sort of fantasy, yeah. you know, point of view. So yeah, no man, it's just it's just a good film. And, and I know you always say this. You mm. always say, you know, you judge a film sometimes by how you feel when those end credits roll. Yeah. And when these end credits roll, you, you know you've had a really good time. You feel really uh, wholesome because yeah. it's been a fun film. But there's also some lovely family moments in it as well. And you just feel great as those end credits roll. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if you, it, feels if like, you, it feels like Christmas. Yeah, if you feel good at the end credits, you know, you watch a good film. Um, and that goes throughout, you know, I've heard, mentioned it loads of times, you know. Um with some classic movies it's just um, yeah every now and again a film like this turns up doesn't it I think the other the film for me of late which I've really enjoyed which was quite unexpected was one was Better Watch Out which you mentioned there Dan the other one was The Babysitter yeah The Babysitter which was a Netflix yeah that's great the first Babysitter movie I haven't seen the second one but um, I don't think it's as good I've only heard people mention that but um, the first one I thought this is kind of like Home Alone, but, you know, obviously more of a horror vibe, uh, which was great. And I would also recommend Krampus, um, which is a bit... Oh, yeah. It's obviously much more horror. Yeah. But there's a real fa- family Christmas vibe to that one as well. Yeah, and um, I know it's a film that we're going to cover as well on the show together, Dan. It might be our next one, actually. Um, well, obviously after Flash Gordon. Um was uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, it's kind of almost set in the same universe for me. These films, you know, it just feels yeah. like it's got the same sort of aesthetic to it. You know, the same sort of vibe. It's it's all about family, yeah, and you know, family during a special time of year, trying to get back to them. And that film definitely covers that as well. And um, Uncle Buck as Home well. Alone. <laughs> um, Uncle Buck. I mean, yeah. it's all about John Candy. Let's be honest. Yeah. Put John Candy in a film, then I'm happy with that. Yeah, he's just it's great. So, um, so yeah, so yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks for uh, coming on to the show today to review this film, man. You know, it's just uh, 
Uh, like I say, Christmas is soon approaching. Listen, us, I uh, would come and talk about Home Alone. I will talk about Home Alone all day long because I've already seen it twice this year. Um, probably, probably be at least another one time I'll watch it during the Christmas holidays. It's one of those films I watch a couple of times over the Christmas holidays. It's just my favourite Christmas film. I think I love yeah, it. Yeah, so I'm always happy to come on and talk about films I love. So, um, what you got coming up next, Dan, um, on Haunted Hill? So we've got that Vincent Price special I mentioned. Um, we're going to squeeze in that that before Christmas. Um, we're looking at um, the Abominable Doctor Fibes and Madhouse, two 1970s Vincent Price spooky, spectacular films. Um, and then for Christmas, we are looking at Bill Murray in the Richard Donner movie Scrooged, which clever, is great. Clever movie. Yeah. And the, the 80s, very clever, brilliant movie. And the 80s slasher uh, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night oh. by Killer Santa Claus. Which is... I think so, yeah, my, that's that, what we got doing. That's actually made a bit of a comeback of late, I think. I've seen a lot of people post that on the Facebook page um, in the last few years. Yeah, it's. I think it's underrated. Um, there's five of them in, in the series that, that ran through to the early 90s. But uh, the first one or two are definitely underrated gems, and I think it'll be fun to talk about that. Yeah, definitely. All right, now look forward to that one, mate. Because, like I say, you're well past the hundred mark on your show now, aren't you? So you you've been knocking them out this year as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's been good stuff. Yeah. Mate. Ah, fantastic. All right, Dan. Well, um, like I say, thanks for coming on to the show, mate. Hopefully, like I say, we were supposed to do Flash Gordon today, but unfortunately, uh, Ricky Morgan is just a little bit poorly. So we're going to save that episode because we need to have Rick on, you know, for Flash Gordon, especially with. It wouldn't be Flash Gordon. It wouldn't be a Flash Gordon without Ricky Morgan. Would Ricky, it? Ricky Morgan's Flash Gordon, man. Do you know what I mean? He just is. <laughs> <laughs> he um with with his show Indeed. with his How Mean podcast. If you haven't listened to How Mean, check it out, guys. Little shout out there. Him and Danny Bennett and Mark Allison have a ball on there, and they've really brought that film which is a fantastic movie anyway it's a one-off to another level in their podcast show and it's a whole ton of fun so there's um i think in the words of ricky morgan he says there's nothing real about this show it's pretty fake and we just make it up as we go along <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty much uh how i mean <laughs> so yeah um, me. and between you and me dan we've got um Planes, trains, and automobiles. We're going to try and get in at some point. I mean, I think that's our next one. I'm looking forward to that, definitely. Um, and I was going to say, mate, um, going to throw this one on this on the spot now. I was thinking about um, Honey, I blew up. Oh, Honey, I shrunk the kids. Perhaps for the new oh, year or yes. something like that. So uh, maybe um, Rick Moranis. Yeah, <laughs> Rick Moranis with his uh, was it his wee toes or whatever, and he's hanging from the washing line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking crazy. And there's giant ants. Yeah, I love it. What more do you need for a film, eh, man? That's what you. That's what going to cinema is all about. So, um, so yeah, there you go, guys. Um, so for a little bit of admin for the show, just before I close the show off, I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. So please go and check out all the other shows on there, including Dan's show uh, podcast on Haunted Hill. And you can also find uh, Bite Size Cinema on several players, um, iTunes, Spotify. Um, and if you put in Bite Size Cinema Podcast into Google, there'll be somewhere where you can find it, find it on a player. So, um, so yeah. So, Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, we may just get one more in before Christmas, but we'll have to wait and see. But if I don't, Merry Christmas. Um, Happy New Year to everybody, and like I say, just just keep your spirits up, guys, because we're getting to the end of 2020, and we hopefully 21 um, will be a great, great New Year for us. So um, keep it bite-sized, keep it safe, and we'll see you soon. And watch out for those microwave machines and paint pots and nails <laughs> coming out the floor. <laughs> see you later.
If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.